sometimes there is a need to have an accurate 3D model of a box culvert head wall and wing wall situation. The number of combinations of head walls, dimension, skew angle um, can be almost endless. Um, therefore, it's, it's not unusual to have a situation um, where you're modeling something that's a, a non-standard situation. Um, 3D cells can be used to model head walls, um, but the disadvantage of that me method is that you will need a different 3D cell for every combination of head wall size and skew angle and wing wall configuration. So that could be a, a limitation that every time you run into one of these situations, you have to develop a new 3D cell. An alternative approach is to, you pl up to apply 3D linear templates. Um, the advantage of this approach is that with just two linear templates, you can model virtually any situation that comes up, regardless of the size of the box cover or its skew angle or whether or not the, the wing walls are the same on both sides or different because of local topographic reasons. So I'm going to run through, um, run through this, this approach. Uh, the first thing that you'll need, there's some preliminary steps that you'll have to go through. And first of all, what you need is a completed roadway mo corridor model, of course. Uh, after that, you'll need a couple of template components to apply the, the a couple of um, linear templates that you'll need to make this work. So let's take a look at that. So there's two that you'll need, one for the wing walls that's solid and one for the head wall opening. And these will need two different control points as part of the template. You'll need a control point down here that corresponds to the invert of the box culvert that will set the, the, the um, elevation of the footing. And you'll need another control point for the top of the head wall that will be controlled by the fill catch point behind the head wall. So these two pieces are set independently. Now, all these dimensions are controlled by parametric constraints. So the width of the, of the wall, the depth of the footing, uh, I mean, the thickness of the footing, the depth of the footing, the width of the heel and the toe, the freeboard between the fill catch point and the top of the wall, all of these things are parametrically controlled. So regardless of the design of your particular wall, you can use this template. Once you have your templates, the next thing you need to do is have your culvert and head wall laid out in plan view. So you need to create horizontal and vertical alignments for the culvert. So the invert of the culvert is determined as well as where the head wall location should be. So you can use open roads tools to do that. You can cut profiles and cross sections and figure out exactly where this head wall needs to be horizontally relative to the slope. Once you have that done, you'll then need to create two different profiles for a horizontal alignment. You need to lay out a horizontal alignment that follows the back of the wall and then complete two profiles for that horizontal alignment. So here's an example. This first profile is the intersection point of the fill catch slope as it hits the back of the wall. And then there's the profile here that represents the invert of the box culvert. And again, you can use the open roads tools to create those profiles. With those profiles done, you're now ready to apply the linear templates to create the head wall and wing wall elements. After that's done, you'll then need to apply point controls to those linear templates in order to set the elevation of the footing relative to the invert and a second point control to set the elevation of the top of the wall relative to the catch point behind the wall. As you can see here, I've transitioned so that this is not a, a constant value. I want the, the, end, the, the toe of the wing wall, the end of the wing wall to be higher, to have a larger freeboard than at the, at the top. If I look at the head wall itself, 
look at it head on, you can see that the top of the wall is not level because the freeboard is a constant value. So the top of the wall is a constant value above the intersection of the slope behind the wall. I don't have to do it this way. I can vary that parametric constraint value so that the freeboard varies and the top of the wall is level. I have that option. Lastly, you need to apply an end condition exception to the roadway corridor model itself so that the fill slope stops behind the wall. And in order for the end conception, the end condition exception to work, you'll need to go to the define target aliasing command and add the horizontal and vertical alignments as a target alias so, so that the end condition exception will find that and intersect with it. So as you can see, there's, there's a number of steps involved, um, but this is a, an option that you have that once you have the linear template set up, you can apply this to virtually any situation.